Hello Internet. My name is Roro and welcome to my channel. I hope everyone's having a good day. Today I wanted to talk about something that I've been kind of putting off talking about on this channel, but it's such a big part of my life that it doesn't really make sense for me to keep it to myself and not share it, especially because this channel is meant for me to sift through thoughts and ideas and feelings and get them out, share them, get response, hopefully help people along the way that deal with the same issues, and yeah. The biggest mental illness and mental hurdle that I've had to deal with and still have to deal with in my life is borderline personality disorder, also known as BPD for short, also apparently known as emotionally unstable personality disorder. I've never heard it specifically referred to as that, but that definitely makes sense. And how I would describe this to somebody who's not aware is, I'm going to use an analogy here, so hopefully it all makes sense. Imagine every person is born, and by the time they reach a certain age, they are expected to build the foundation of a house. And that house is basically your mind, your psyche, you know, like the way you approach life mentally, or even just like your emotional maturity, your emotional development. You can really sum it down to that, I suppose. And everyone's given tools that they need to learn how to build this foundation over the course of their life. They may not know that they have these tools or they may not need these tools right away or they don't even know how to use them but over time they will learn how to use them and they will start building the foundation of their house so for someone with bpd it's like you don't have any of those tools but you're still expected to build the foundation but you can't really do that if you don't have the tools to do that in the same way that if you were actually building a house you would need a lot of construction tools you know, supplies in order to build it. But if you don't have the tools, you literally can't build it. So basically what this translates to in the layman term, I guess you could say, is like emotional immaturity as you get older. So essentially your emotional maturity is stunted and you react how children react basically as like, you know, a late teen, early adult and so on your emotional reactions are going to be the same as if you were like a little kid. And some people just never work on this or they're not aware of it and they just live their whole lives reacting in this way. And obviously there's other things that could lead to this aside from just borderline personality disorder. But I'm just talking about my specific experience and what I've perceived and seen as someone with BPD and how it's affected me and how it's felt to me. And I'm sure I'll end up making a bunch of other videos about BPD on this channel but today i wanted to focus on something that i thought about today that happens pretty often that is a product of borderline personality disorder and it's me sort of always feeling like i can self-destruct at any moment you know like i'm ready to sort of ruin my whole life in an instance and that sounds very dramatic and it's because it is dramatic but that's the thing about borderline personality disorder everything is completely blown out of proportion everything is so like if you took a black and white photo of something and you color graded it correctly, there's going to be grays in there. It's not going to be fully black or fully white, most likely. It's going to be mostly gray tones. But someone with borderline personality disorder, they'll perceive that same image completely blown out of proportion and just fully black and fully white. And I think for me and for a lot of other people with BPD, this comes from a lack of self-love. Basically... You don't feel like you deserve the love that you have in your life. You don't feel like you deserve the things that you have in your life, the, you know, the achievements, whatever you want to say, like, and that's why you're so ready to feel like you can just destroy it all because you don't feel like you ever deserved it in the first place. So let me give you guys an example from this morning that happened and it triggered me. And this is a really good example of how this sort of manifests in my mind and potentially in other people's minds as well. So... A thing that happens a lot with people with BPD, and they don't do it intentionally, but I do this, and I'm still working on this, is getting a negative response from somebody, even the slightest hint of negativity. It doesn't even have to be like, fuck you. Like I would prefer that in a lot of moments, honestly. Just some sort of weird feeling that you get. It could be real, it could be not. I'll get into that later, but... Any sort of perception of negative energy feels like an extreme harsh attack and it's very, very painful. So I was just, you know, going through my morning. My partner was getting up, getting their day started. And 
I said something to them. It was just a silly offhanded comment. It literally was not important. It was just a stupid thing that I was saying. And I'm not even downplaying it for the sake of, you know, trying to rationalize what I did. No, it was just a nothing comment. It literally didn't matter. And their reaction was basically no reaction, which from their perspective is totally fine because it wasn't that big of a deal. Like I said, it wasn't like something important that I was trying to get across to them and they ignored me. I was just sort of talking about whatever. And I perceived this as a personal attack and that they hated me and that they were upset with what I was doing and what I was saying. But in reality, they were still in bed getting ready still waking up they weren't even getting ready for their day yet so it wasn't anything that happened sometimes there are things that do happen and you're right but like i said i'll get into that later and luckily my partner has been with me for a very long time since before i got my diagnosis since before i went through intensive therapy to work through things when i was completely raw and you know didn't address any of my trauma didn't address any of my issues or not I was addressing my issues, but not to the extent that was necessary. They were there throughout the whole thing. So they're very supportive. I just want to put that out there too. Like my partner is amazing. We help each other so much. We've been together for so long for the age we are and our lives are incredible. So of course, being somebody with borderline personality disorder, I immediately start brainstorming how I'm going to run away and move across the country and abandon the life that I have because of a little facial expression that happened that didn't resonate with me in a positive way and I perceived it as a personal attack <laughs> and it sounds really stupid but that's true like this is something that happens to me often like not this specifically but a little thing will happen that anybody else would maybe be upset about but it wouldn't completely throw their day off or throw their life plan off but for me it does and it's really difficult to get through especially now that I'm so self-aware of it and it, but it doesn't matter the feeling comes and it is what it is so a good analogy that I can make for this feeling and a way to kind of describe it again I'm using a lot of analogies this video but I really like analogies they help me understand things better um, so imagine you have a garden and obviously if you have a garden it needs to be maintained but once the garden's going and it's really going well, you're going to get a lot of stability from that garden because you can either A, eat the food from the garden that can sustain you, B, you can sell the stuff from the garden that can make you money that will help you sustain you, C, you can just you know help the people in your community to survive and that will sustain you in a different way. But like I said, it's difficult to maintain. It's not something that you can just plug in and forget about. Like You have to address it daily. But that is giving you stability that you require to survive in a healthy way. Now, fast food, for example, that's just a quick meal that will satisfy your senses. It'll fill you, but it's not sustainable. It's not stable. It's just quick desire. You know what I'm saying? So would you move across the country and abandon your garden completely for one McDonald's meal? No, you wouldn't. That doesn't make any sense because you're going to eat that meal. You'll feel satisfied for that moment, but then you'll just keep needing those meals. But those meals are not going to sustain you. What would have sustained you is that garden that you spent so much time, you know, maintaining and growing so that you have this for the rest of your life. And the garden can be referred to as my relationship with my partner for sure, but it really is my internal well-being and me working on myself and taking care of my own garden so I don't feel like I have to constantly run off and get fast food. You know what I mean? And the other thing too is if you're not maintaining your garden properly, maybe your crops will die. You know, you're not going to have as much stuff. So there will be times where you feel like you do need that fast food. You know what I'm saying? And there is a little bit of a balance that's okay, but it's, it's, it's a thin line to walk down so with all that said with all that put out there what is the next step what should i do what should you do after you realize all this stuff and work through it and you're in this situation well the first thing that you should do and i don't think this is easy to do immediately so you may need time to decompress 
because you're not going to be thinking right if you're triggered. So what you need to do is figure out, are you really trying to self-destruct because of something that didn't happen or did something actually happen and your reaction is more so rational? Maybe not fully, but it's understandable and it's not completely absurd and for no reason. And that's a really difficult thing to figure out, especially for people with BPD, because I'm not very open with people in my life about having borderline personality disorder. Obviously, like my closest family and my friends, they all know. But I had an experience early on where I reached out to somebody who was is one of my good friends still. You know, you can't expect everybody to understand and just be okay with everything right away or be considerate, whatever. So, you know, I told them, listen, I've been going to therapy and I found out I have borderline personality disorder. And their immediate reaction was, oh, so you're crazy. And that's what most people associate BPD with is just someone who's crazy. And to an extent that is true. A lot of people, you know, it could be perceived as crazy if you don't understand what's going on. But you don't understand the pain that those people are in and that I'm in. Like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't think he understood how much that hurt me. And I never expressed that to him because I didn't want to talk about it anymore. I didn't want it to be a thing anymore. So I just had to internalize that and move on with my life. But here's the thing. This is almost like a paradox with borderline personality disorder is you are more aware of what other people are doing a lot of times than they are aware of what they're doing. So what that means is somebody may feel a certain way and they're showing it on their face, but they're not saying it specifically. And you can see you can see it. It's very clear. And they're acting in a way that matches that feeling. But they're not even aware of how they feel. And they're not even... Maybe they're not admitting to themselves how they feel. So they're not consciously going to say that out loud in that moment. So a lot of times with BPD, I have to just pretend I don't notice things and just hope that they work it out and come to me, if that makes sense. Because they're not going to be honest in the moment. No one's ever going to... And that's the other thing, too, is no one's ever going to be fully honest, ever. No one's ever going to admit to all of their faults, ever. That's just not how people are. No one is like that. So what that leads me to do, and what I'm realizing more so recently, is anything that I have internally that's not dire and an immediate emergency, I have to start internalizing those feelings because I'm a very externally emotional person and it's hard for me to sort of reel myself in emotionally. And if I hold too many things in for too long, I do explode. And that's an issue that I've had and that I've had to work through with like anger and rage, but that I've worked on, but that doesn't mean I don't feel emotions. You know what I mean? So what I've realized is if I say what I'm feeling and it's irrational, let's just say it, it's, it is irrational. If I say what I'm feeling, I express that to a person, they're, almost, they're never going to react positively because it's like you're accusing somebody of something and nobody wants to be accused of anything. Whether they're doing it or not, it doesn't matter because it's, it's going to end up being a negative situation. And if it's not important, it doesn't need to happen. If it's something that's important, then yeah, you have to just kind of get through that shittiness and just get through that conversation and it's going to suck but it needed to happen but if it's something that's not important and not serious that conversation doesn't need to happen because you're already hurt so you're feeling pain and i'm saying you i really mean me i'm feeling pain so sharing that pain is only going to potentially make the other person also feel pain which is going to make me feel even more pain so what i'm realizing recently is i need to just hold all that shit in and not worry about it and hope that it passes. And if it doesn't pass, then I'll address it when I'm a little bit more calm and I'm not triggered. Because if it's something that's on your mind and it's eating away at you, then yeah, you need to do something about that. But if it's something that was just a passing moment, you don't need to fully go hard to like figure it out. You know, you can just move on. Hopefully that's the dream at least. And at the end of the day, no one is going to put you before themselves and they shouldn't. And if they do, then that's they have their own issues that they have to work on personally. I've dealt with that as well. So what you have to do is you have to look out for yourself first and foremost. You have to make sure that the situations you're in are healthy and conducive to your lifestyle. 
you have to make sure that the relationships you're in are not toxic and that they make you feel good and you make them feel good. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It could be family. It could be friendship. You have to make sure that both parties are feeling the same about the situation, you know? So yeah, just a little summary of my struggles with BPD, a little example for context. Um, I'm definitely going to be talking about this more on this channel. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything that you think I should consider or if there's anything that I said that you know resonated with you. I, I really hope that I can help people because that's the whole point of this channel is sifting through thoughts and ideas, just trying to get them out. And I do that for me, but I share it for everybody else. So I hope that I'm helping you guys. Um, and yeah, now I am ending all my videos with a little bit of original music that I'll, I'm just making for this video specifically. So hope you enjoy this little outro music before you watch the next video. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.